At the end of this video, you're going to be able to conjugate most verbs in the Japanese language into nine super useful forms on top of their dictionary or plain form. And it's going to be easy. You'll be able to do this because if you know about godan katsuyo or godan conjugation, it's actually really simple to conjugate verbs in Japanese. Now, godan katsuyo is the way that native Japanese people learn about conjugation in Japanese, and it kind of blows my mind that most textbooks in English don't cover it. Or at least try to avoid it. Because it made my life so much easier when I learned about it. So let's go ahead and make your life a lot easier too. So godan verbs are verbs that, in their dictionary form, end in either u, tsu, mu, bu, nu, ku, gu, su, and sometimes du. If the sound e or e doesn't come before du, then it's definitely a godan verb. If e or e does come before du, it may be an ichidan verb. I'll be doing another video about ichidan verbs in the future, so if that's finished, there'll be a link in the description or up on the top left of the screen right now. One other thing to know is that the verbs suru and kuru are irregular verbs. I'll include more about them in the ichidan video. By the way, no verbs in Japanese end in fu, pu, zu, or yu. And only one verb in modern Japanese ends in nu, that is shinu, or to die. So you may notice that all verbs in their dictionary form end with an u sound. Now that's very important. So let's go ahead and look at a hiragana chart. First we have the vowel sounds. A, i, u, e, and o. You'll notice that there's five different vowel sounds. This is actually where godan katsuyo, the word, comes from. Godan, you may notice, is five steps. Katsuyo means conjugation. The five steps we're talking about are these five different vowel sounds. If we move down the hiragana chart, we'll notice that it's just a consonant sound plus one of these five vowel sounds. For instance, if we take the k consonant sound, we get ka, ki, ku, ke, ko. If we take bu, we get ba, bi, bu, be, bo. If we take su, we get sa, shi, su, se, so. So there's five steps, or godan. Now, to do godan katsuyo, or godan conjugation, all we need to do is take that last character in the dictionary form, which is, for example, ku in aruku, and move that character up and down the chart to get the stem for many different conjugations. We then just need to add one decided ending, and we've got a conjugation. It's finished. That's all it takes. It's super simple. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at each of these conjugations and what they're called in Japanese. So let's go ahead and take the verb aruku, which is to walk, and step through this godan katsuyo. I'm going to cover the Japanese terminology as well as their English equivalent, and by the end we're going to be able to conjugate aruku and any other godan verb into nine different forms. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and start at the u column with aruku. Aruku. This is the shushike, or dictionary slash plain form. If you look up a verb in a dictionary, it's always going to be in this form, the u ending. By the way, this is also the present slash future tense in plain informal Japanese. In this column, we also have rentaike. Now, rentaike is the attributive form. It's exactly the same as the dictionary form, except that you can take this and attach it to any noun. For example, kiku renshu. Listening practice. So once again, that's dentaike, and the dictionary form was shushike. So let's go ahead and take aruku and move up the chart. Our first one is the e column, so we're gonna get aruki. This is denyoke, or the mas form. The mas form is the present or future tense in polite Japanese. So all we have to do to get it is take aruki and add masu. Arukimasu. And we now have the present slash future tense in polite Japanese. You can also add masen to aruki and get arukimasen, which is the negative present slash future tense in polite Japanese. If you add mashita instead, you get the polite past tense. So, arukimashita. If you instead add masen deshita, you get arukimasen deshita, which is the polite negative past tense. So by just memorizing these four endings, you automatically have four extremely useful polite conjugations. And all you need to do is take the verb and move it up from the ku column to the ki column. Arukimasu. Arukimasen. Arukimashita. Arukimasen deshita. And this is the same for any godan verb. We'll cover a couple other verbs a little bit later so that you can see 
it's the same every time. Next, we're gonna move up to the a column. So, aru ka. This is mizenke, mizenke, which is the short negative form. To get the short negative form, all you need to do is add nai to the end of this. So, aru ka nai, aru ka nai. And you now have the negative conjugation. And this never changes. You add nai to the end of the mizenke, and you have the short negative conjugation. Aru ka nai not walk. So let's go ahead and move back down past the u column to the e column. Here we have three super useful conjugations, the first of which is mereke, or the imperative form, also known as the command form. Aruke, aruke. This means walk. If we add ba after that, we get kateke, which is the hypothetical form, or if walk. Aruke ba, aruke ba. We now know how to say if walk or if you walk. In the A column, we also have kanoke or potential form. To get it, all we have to do is add do. So, aruke do. Aruke do. Can walk. Finally, we move down to the O column. Here we'll find ikoke, which is actually part of the mizenke when native Japanese kids learn it, but it does have a separate meaning and a separate ending. O. Specifically, so I wanted to separate it out into ikoke, which is also what it's known as. Now, ikoke is the volitional form. It's like let's do something. So to get this, all you do is move to the o column. So aruko, and then add u at the end. So aruko, and this means let's walk. So let's go ahead and do this with another verb. We'll do hanasu, which means to speak. We can move it up and down the chart just like we did aruku, and we're gonna get the same types of meanings. So let's start with the dictionary form, hanasu, and move up to denyoke, hanashi masu, hanashi masen, not speak, hanashi mashita, spoke, hanashi masen deshita, didn't speak. Moving up to mizenke, we get hanasa nai, hanasa nai, not speak. Moving back down to mereke, we get hanase, which means speak. Staying on the A column and moving to kateke, we get hanaseba, hanaseba, if speak. Staying still on that line and going to kanoke, we get hanaseru, hanaseru, can speak. Moving down to the O column or ikoke, we get hanaso, hanaso, let's speak. Now, the only types of godam verbs that are a little just a little bit different are verbs that end in u. So let's go ahead and take utao, which is to sing, and see what the difference is. It's very small. Shushike and dentaike are, of course, utao. Moving up to renyoke, we get utaimasu. Utaimas, utaimasen, utaimashita, utaimasen deshita. Utai. Same so far, right? The difference is when we move up to the a column. For verbs that end in u, we don't change to a. It doesn't become uta a. It becomes uta wa. We use the character wa in this column. The ending is the same. Uta wa nai. Uta wa nai. Every other conjugation is exactly the same. Moving down to mereke. Utae. Utae. Kateke is utaeba. Kanoke is utaeru. Utaeru. And ikoke is utao. Utao. So those are all the same. See how easy that is? You can now conjugate most verbs in Japanese, namely all godam verbs, into nine different super useful forms. And all you have to do is memorize a few endings, namely one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine endings. If you memorize nine endings, you can do the conjugations. Because those endings never change, the only thing that changes is where you move the verb to on the chart. So now what I want you to do is take the following verbs and practice conjugating them into these nine different forms that we just learned down in the comments. Those verbs are kiku, to listen, oyogu, to swim, asobu, to play, matsu, to wait, nomu, to drink, and kao, to buy. You can pick just one or do all six, and I'll correct you down in the comments. Good luck! If you found this video useful, please hit the like button, share it with anyone you know who's studying Japanese, also, subscribe, the bell, you know, all that stuff. See you next time.